Our scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, reading from chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon, and about three o'clock he did the same, and about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last have worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied, to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We could all tell our own version of this parable. We know people who, in our not-so-humble opinion, didn't earn or deserve what they got. A job, a promotion, a raise, a recognition, happiness, success, the fact that we worked longer and tried harder seemed to make no difference. More often than not, we view the world through the lens of fairness rather than grace. We've been taught from an early age that fairness matters. Watch a bunch of children play and it won't be long before you hear someone say, it's not fair. And it's not just children. Adults, we want fairness too because it gives us some sense of assurance of order, predictability, control, and hierarchy, even if it is a false assurance. We live and promote a wage-based society in which you earn what you get. You deserve the consequences in your life, good or bad, of your actions. But what happens when divine goodness trumps fairness? You get today's parable. A parable that suggests wages and grace represent two opposing world views. Grace is dangerous. It reverses business as usual. So the last will be first and the first will be last. This is not normal. 
That's not how a wage-based society works. The world says that the last are last and the first are first because they deserve it. It's only fair. Those first laborers seeing the last, receiving the amount that the master had agreed to pay them, they thought they would receive more. Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they think that if those who only worked a few hours got a full day's wage, surely those who worked all day, double, triple, quadruple the time, they would get paid more? After all, it's it's only fair, right? When looking through the societal lens of capitalism and consumerism, we would expect this to be the arrangement too. Like us, the workers in the vineyard are thinking in terms of transactions, a contract in which the terms of agreement are spelled out and signed in order to keep the parties accountable, but grace doesn't factor into such a mindset. The workers, they see a business arrangement and the master instead cultivates relationship. The bottom line for the owner of the vineyard isn't money, it's mercy. Such a calculation remains difficult for me, for us to understand. Hence we grumble in the face of God's grace. If we do more, then we think we should receive more. That's how the world works. Merit, not mercy. Grit, not grace. Contract, not covenant. Transactions, not trust. Payment for services, not ongoing relationships. And then, Jesus upends all of our norms, and we are baffled by such generosity. We don't know what to do when there's not a gradation of value among people, when comparisons with which we evaluate ourselves and others don't matter, when we can't calculate what we and what others are worth. Grace confuses the system that we thought was a given. Grace looks beyond our productivity, our appearance, our dress, our race, our ethnicity, our accomplishments, our failures. Grace recognizes there is more to you and to who you are than what you have done or left undone. Grace reveals the goodness of God. Wages reveal human effort. Grace seeks unity and inclusion. Wages makes distinctions and separations. Grace reminds us that we are not nearly as self-sufficient, deserving, or independent as a wage-based society would like us to believe. Grace doesn't justify or excuse discrimination, unfairness, or oppression. On the contrary, it holds before us the truth that each person is more than their behavior, their looks, their accomplishments, or their failures. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound And yet still, still so often we cling to the concept of fairness, 
wanting to get what we think we deserve and like the first laborers in the field, grumble in the presence of grace when others receive more than we think they should. It's not fair. But just imagine if instead we responded with gratitude for the grace given to us and rejoiced when others joined us in God's vineyard no matter what hour it was. What if we truly celebrated God's generosity to us and to others without comparison or measurement? Dean of Vanderbilt Divinity School, the Reverend Dr. Emily M. Towns wrote in her book, Womanist Ethics and the Cultural Production of Evil, God's love for us is unconditional. God makes demands, has commands. Perhaps the simplest and the hardest of these is that we are called to live our lives out of possibilities, not shortcomings. The simplest and hardest element of a life of discipleship may be rejecting the cultural narrative that we should receive more, that we always need more, that we deserve more. This mindset, it makes us perpetually on the hunt for more. We struggle to rejoice in God's grace that cannot be counted and to live out of possibility rather than perpetually seeing our shortcomings and the shortcomings of others. But thanks be to God. Despite our best or our worst efforts, our worth is not synonymous with our usefulness to someone or something else. God seeks us out to participate in the work of the kingdom. God enlists whoever says yes. When asked to go to the field... So much of what we value and we count and we measure doesn't matter to God. This parable comes right after Jesus' encounter with the rich young man. He too operates from a place of transaction. He knows the rules and he follows them. The young man asks Jesus, What do I lack? Certainly, he expected Jesus to say nothing. You're good to go. But instead, Jesus tells the rich young man to sell all he has, give the money to the poor, and follow. Jesus invites the young man into relationship with others and with God, and relationships cannot be calculated. They must be entered into and lived. This parable of the vineyard challenges so many of our cultural sensibilities. Productivity is paramount. There is an understood correlation between hours worked and pay received. Our value is inextricably tied to what we contribute to the economy. The last do not get to be first. But Jesus, 
through this story lets us know that God's view is so completely and utterly different than our own. God wants everyone in the vineyard. Everyone paid a living wage. No one left out on the streets. Why do we grumble at such grace? Perhaps if we pictured ourselves as the workers who came at the end of the day, rather than those who arrived first thing in the morning, maybe then our response to God's grace would be very different. When we stop thinking that we deserve more and instead recognize the value of what God has given us, then our grumbling will be transformed into gratitude. Then we begin to live our lives with others out of possibility instead of shortcomings. With no thought of first or last, only joy in being called together to work in God's vineyard. And all God's people said, Amen.